course, this relationship is an eternal relationship, an eternally realized relationship. They are both mutual statements. We were very contaminated, are very contaminated, low people from the Western countries. But still, as we heard from Bhagavan Prabhu, our very name was very, very merciful to us. And if we could grasp a little bit of what he was trying to give, not only to us, but to the entire world, he gave us so much mercy and so much sense of personal, con personal connection with him. I, to think about those days, it was a different environment that we have now. The Iskhan community was a community of about a hundred temples worldwide. Some of them very small, maybe five or ten devotees. Some of them quite large, over a hundred. But in every one of those temples, there was a deeply felt connection with Sri Prabhupada personally. And this connection was realized and uh, uh, felt, actualized every day in our city. And that center, which was cheap for us, was the center of preaching. Now, one other thing. In 1949, Sri Rakhita Dhanavish gave a speech, a lecture on the occasion of the disappearance of his own grandmother, Sri Rakhita Siddhanta Sanchanta Goswami Prabhupada. And he said that it is indeed very important that on this day, we observe all the formal rituals, everything that you should do to honor one's guru, the artists, the offering of flowers, all of these things are very important. But the most important thing of all is to remember and bring dear to your heart the Manobishta. This is how you connect with your spiritual master, and this is how you remember and honor him on this most important day. Now, how to do that? How to do that? Yesterday was the disappearance day of two great, great Vaishnav gurus in our life. Srila Nitya Diva Pradishka, Srila Bhakti, Vedanta Vani Goswami Raj, and Nitya Diva Pradishka Bhakti Vedanta Chiri Pradishka. And listening to the Pushpanjali, the offerings of the disciples and followers of these two great Vaishnav saints, I was struck with wonder at the, the deeply felt connection, the deeply realized connection that these devotees had with their guru. Because unlike us, many of these disciples had associated intimately and served together their gurus for 20 or 30 years, nurturing and building that relationship. And I was struck by the depth of their emotion and the profundity of their realizations. And I thought then that if I really want to come and understand how to connect with my own guru, I must learn how to associate and serve more realized, more advanced devotees than me. <laughs> and I believe that this was the heartfelt hope of my own Gurudev. That as Bhagavan Maharaj said, that one of his last wishes and orders is that all the devotees around the world learn to come together, learn to associate, and learn to preach together. In the second statement of his own Upanishadri, the first one being that Vishrama Guru Seva is the way to attain bhakti. So the bhakti of the application will solve the time there so that the way to get this guru is by learning how to serve Hari, <coughs> Guru, and Vaishnavas. And so yesterday, hearing and seeing these devotees, I became so affected and so grateful to have the opportunity to be in their association. Of course, the association of our beloved Guru is to walk around to the Iger story, but this wealth is functional. And it's for the Bhagavad Raj, and it's for the Trinidad Raj for so long. And I believe that the Manavishna, one of the Manavishnas of our own Guru, my own Guru, 
was to place us under the shelter in the, in the association of these other devotees and learn how to perform bhakti and learn how to absorb these deep words of seva from them. So um, I think that one of the great acts of mercy of both of these two Vaishnavas is their own disappearance one day before the disappearance of my own guru so that by watching and witnessing how their disciples are absorbed and performing their own guru seva that I might learn something as well. So on this day, I would like to beg all of the disciples here, both Srila Ramaj, Srila Vamanaj, Srila Shisha disciples of Srila Chirikaraj, and the servants and disciples of all the great Vaishnavas, to please give me your shelter and allow me to come in some small way into your service so that I may learn how to serve and honor the whole world.
because he when he was he laughed and the whole world seemed to enter into him. He was, he was captivating everyone. His smile and laughter was so enchanting and so overwhelming that it, it took the hearts of everyone. Oh ocean. People notice Shri Prabhupada's just his darshan. There are many, many qualities in Shri Prabhupada's personality. The one which really struck people was just that compassion. That we felt that Shri Prabhupada has so much, actually, he, he desires my welfare. He's my dearest ever well wisher. When you look at Shri Prabhupada, there are so many amazing uh, photographs of him. And you see, I see that. Many different moods. Sometimes he appears very stern. Someone said, oh, you don't look very happy there. He said, actually, at that time I was experiencing the highest bliss. And sometimes we see so much bliss. Some, but generally, if you look in his pictures, you'll see that behind a very extrovert demeanor, that he has this twinkle in his uh, laughter, his actual laughter. He's thinking, I am he's very humbly that I'm just an insignificant mortal and this and this might and I shouldn't say it because I don't can't see the Muhammad. He's thinking that I'm very tiny and and I'm receiving so much glorification. So oh ocean which manifests the nectar and Flow of Sri Harinam. So that simply by speaking, by chanting, then the whole Mahaprabhu's movement became manifest. His chanting, his hearing, and chanting and hearing, Sadhana, Vidyam, and so on became manifest just by his instigation. O ocean of the ever expanding mellows of Nityananda's mercy, O bestower. She was Sri Dharma, she pointed that Sri Dharma must be Nityananda Avesh, Shakti. He cannot be other. His mercy, his humility is so great, when he wrote this poem in Boston Harbor, that the Lord, the Supreme Lord, is had to come down and, and give his Shakti, invest the Shakti in Sri Dharma. Oh, the store of of charity of your own bliss. As Bhagavad Gita will say that his, uh, his he invested his power his shakti in his in the devotees mainly to his his so, his, so uh, dear his loving mood. People don't want to do anything to show already. In this way he got his power. O ocean of the divine servitude, the Buddha speaker Sri Gandhara Kikini Hari. O ocean of the mellows, the waters of Madhurya Ras. It's a very high topic to Shri Prabhupada. If we see, although even in the topics which Prabhupada quoted, spoken in the 7th chapter of Sri Chaitanya Charitamya Jan, Adi Diva, the first book which he wrote, which where Panchapatta churned the waters of love of God and break open the glass of the treasure house of love of God and distribute the contents to the suffering jivas. And however much the the uh, supply is distributed, still more at least one hundred fold. In this way, this, in, 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 within this text, we see that Madhuri Ras is very commonly exposed to be the highest and the objective of all Vaishnavas, so she is a Bodhi Suchi Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's clearly managed there by Guru's grace, you can read them and see it very clearly. Described the Madhuri Ras is so prominent 
throughout the world in every town and village. My name will be sung. Govinda Dasi, so in the film, Govinda Dasi was telling the story of how the devotee, when she was in New York taking care of Srila Prabhupada, the devotees in San Francisco, now maybe this is from 1967 or something, um, the devotees in San Francisco had sent Srila Prabhupada a tape of their kirtan, and she was saying that they were listening to this kirtan and they were just got shocked. It was so wild. And the devotees there, she knew, because she was from San Francisco, they, they were totally devoted to Srila Prabhupada and very attached to chanting the holy names, but they had no desire to follow the regulated principles. And so the, the kirtan was reflecting this wildness that they had. And then a few months later, um, when Prabhupada was touring America, he went to San Francisco and Govinda Dasi was there and she said that she was she was so surprised because the devotees there, they were clean, they were sober, they were strictly following. And so she was saying that this shows the power of chanting the holy name under the direction of Sadhguru. And this is confirmed in Bhagavatam where it says, Shushasho Shatanasya. Vasudeva Kitaraji, Syan Mahat Sevaya Vipra Punya Kirka Visheshave, Visheshavana. O twice born sages, by serving those devotees who are completely free from all bodies, great service is done. By such service, one gains affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudeva. So Srila Prabhupada had great faith that the holy name of Krishna was not different than Krishna. He knew that there is no greater purified than Krishna's name, Nam Nam Kali Sakudani Jasana Shakti. The principle is that one does not have to become eligible to begin practice. Not that eligibility is not necessary, but that it will be bestowed with practice. And this is the mercy of Sri Guru. In order to practice, he knows one needs pace. And so Srila Prabhupada followed this principle. Now Jiva Goswami explains that when introducing a book, Sambandha is first presented. And Sambandha is presented along with Prayoja for the goal. So why is this? Because in this way the reader understands his relationship to what is being discussed. And then, what is the goal? Why should we should be interested in it in the first place? So similarly, Srila Prabhupada explained who is Krishna and what is our relationship with the Lord. And then, he enchanted us with Krishna. He did not wait to tell us of Krishna's pastimes until we had realized we were not these bodies or that we had completely assimilated so recently it was said, now this is, uh, again, I'm, I'm talking about recently in this class. It was said in a Srimad Bhagavatam class, quote, to discuss the pastimes of the Lord when you have not finished Anarjana Vritti gives pain to the Lord. End quote. Of course, this statement was made in a certain context. But with due respect to the context and also to the speaker, it promotes a dangerous misconception. In a famous speech, Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, Anartha Nibriti without Artha Prabriti causes impersonalism. So how is this? Anartha Nibriti is a removal of impediments to the practice of bhakti. By Artha Prabhupada, he is referring to that which nourishes in a positive way our conceptions of Krishna. So in other words, even in an ineligible stage, we have to strive for prayojan. Of course, we won't, we won't get it without abhideya or without practice, but the desire must be there. And for desire, there must be knowledge. What is the goal? We worship Sri Chaitanya 
Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, with the Baba Venkati of Srimati Radhika. So, what does Mahaprabhu say? And I have to tell you, this is one of Srila Prabhupada's all time favorite verses, and it is also Maharaj's. Um, now, I didn't realize that it was Prabhupada. Maharaj told me to memorize it once, I remember in Hawaii. Um, and uh, then, after I memorized it, I found it everywhere in Prabhupada's books. And usually in Prabhupada's books, it's not in Sanskrit, but it's in English. Now, once you know it, you'll, you'll be able to recognize it. It's a Radha Bhagavad Gita Shatanaya Sthatta Mahavindavana. The object of worship is Rajendra Nathana Shamsundar. And this Vrindavan is not different from him. So many times Prabhupada says, Tatta Mahavindavana. He'll just say it like that. Radhya Kacha Vipasana Vrajavadu Varyena Kapita. The highest mode of worship is that practiced by the gopis. Srimad Bhagavatam Pramana Pramana Mahalam Prema Pumarta Maham. The goal of human life is to develop unalloyed love for Krishna, following in their footsteps, the gopis. This is the heritage of Bhagavatam. So our goal, our worship, is Prajpati, is Ashtakariya Lila, is Radha Dasya, is Manjari Bhav. Unfortunately, even though this is stated by Srila Prabhupada, who is strictly following in the line of Srila Rupa Goswami, because of misconception in his today, these are almost dirty words, or at least they are very potent. The result of this misconception is in the Lakhi Sanatha says. And how is this impersonalism manifest? Fear, which leads to isolationism or the boxing up of Iskar, and finally the lack of trust and the lack of taste. And we fear Sahajiism. This fear is actually only proper. And it has been given to a special Prabhupada who was very careful to protect against degradation, sentimentalism, and ahamkapasana. But instead of trying to find out what is the proper conception, we have boxed ourselves up physically and philosophically and are thus drying up. For, pro for, for, for proper conception, you need three things. Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. Islam as an entity that does not have Sadhu Sangha because it, do, it does not admit there are bona fide Vaishnavas outside of its borders. We disrespect Vaishnavas even in the name of Srila Prabhupada. Sri Yamadar Maharaj told me that the last trust Srila Prabhupada formed, I forget the name of that trust, but uh, I'm Okay, so it's the Bhakti as a charity trust. Now, yeah, I view it as a charity to help other Bodhya and Vaishnava temples. And, and that's how it's practiced today, more or less. But, Sri Dhammar told me that it was actually meant, Prabhupada told him, to nourish friendships. It was meant for Sadhu Sangha. And that, that was the first purpose. The charity part was the secondary purpose. So this has all been forgotten, and we are suffering from it. How many Gaudiya monks, who are our most natural allies, have come to our aid during our fight for Srila Prabhupada's rooms at Radha Dhammadar? Dare we even ask them for help? On this day, I cannot avoid mentioning that it is a terrible calamity that Srila Prabhupada's rooms have been taken away by greedy Goswamis. We are suffering the results of our own actions. As we have barred the place of worshiping Srila Prabhupada here in this samadhi, especially on the day of his disappearance, we are being barred from worshiping Srila Prabhupada in his rooms. 
as we have caused heartache to the Vaishnavas, we are suffering. How have we come to this? Where is our love and mercy? So to conclude, there is a wonderful part of Brihad Bhagavata in which Narayana is glorified with the Pandavas as absent. At, at first, they have received a part of Krishna's mercy, uh, sort of like shareholders, which is no small thing to have received a part of Krishna's mercy. But actually, I asked Maharaj this in a new way. I said, um, what does it mean to receive a, a part of Krishna's mercy? And he was he looked at me and he, then he looked at the book and he said, That's not what it says. And and the word was Asiya. And, and I said, Well, what does it mean? And he tried to explain it to me, I still couldn't understand. He explained it again. Finally he said, Madhav Maharaj is it is my servant. You take it as being done for me. And it was like Madhav Maharaj is my representative. So I understood that the idea really means that it's not that the Pandavas have received a part of Krishna's mercy, but they are a part of Krishna's mercy. And therefore, they can give this mercy. And so Srila Prabhupada is Krishna's Asiya. He is giving the true conception of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as giving by Shri Mahaprabhu Swami. This is His mercy. We pray and to receive this and also to help this journey. So I want to thank all of the devotees who have spoke throughout the day and shared their realizations and their intimate understandings of our Shri Prabhupada. I want to thank all the people by Shabbos attending, very attentively listening to these very sweet uh, discourses. And especially I want to thank our beloved Srila Bhakti Kalasa Narayan Goswami Maharaj under whose guidance this entire festival has gone on and is going on every year and will go on in the future until our last breath. And without His mercy, we would not be here at the foot of His wonderful uh, glorifications. And so many intimate realizations expressed by the devotees that we cannot hear anywhere else on this planet. This is all the divine mercy of our Srila Gurudev, who is uh, transmitting the mercy of our Srila Prabhupada. So on this most auspicious occasion, the Tirubha Mahamahos of Titi, of our Srila Asi Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, I am bowing down at the lotus feet of our Srila Gurudev, and begging that he will continue for many, many years to shower the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and our old Guru Varga upon our heads. Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Sri Bhupa Nuga Guru Varga Ki Hello, hello, hello. There's a pair of headphones. There's a pair of headphones.